Is anybody glad to be in the house of God tonight? Amen. Hey, listen, um, I really do believe God has given me a word in this building. So I want you to get out your smartphones and I want you to get out your tablets and I, I want to be able to speak to you um, in a message that God has given me. Um, I really do believe that this is the season where many people forget about the real reason for Christmas. Let's be honest, many of us have been checked out half the service because we think about everything we got to do tonight and tomorrow and between work and, oh, Lord, the kids is off school. Oh, Jesus. What I wanted to do in this service with everybody that's online in Transformation Nation and everybody that's gathered, gathered in this building, I don't know about you, but it feels good in this building right now. It feels feels real good and wherever you're at we're believing that there's no distance in the spirit of God so he's right there with you right now and um I'm gonna bring this word that really is going to challenge us because um we're in week 20 of a series that we're calling help me crazy oh you gotta say it one more time say crazy and this is the conclusion of this series don't say all too much because God's got some things coming in 2020 that I can't wait to share with you. Y'all, I went away at the beginning, right after service last week, I got on a plane and I went somewhere that only my wife knew where I was at to pray. And I said, God, I need clarity for what you want Transformation Church to do in 2020. And y'all, I got it. I got the word that God wants us to gather our faith around and I have instructions of how we're gonna represent God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. And so I'm so grateful that you're here with us and I'm so grateful that God has chosen all of us to take this crazy faith journey together. We've been in this series since August. I don't even remember what else I was doing in August. But I do believe that God has brought us this series and brought the world this series to spark somebody's faith again that you would not just believe that God is the one that will save you from heaven or hell, but he's the one that can bring you into the abundant life that he's called for all of us to live. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about abundance in your health. I'm talking about abundance in your relationship. I'm talking about abundance in your ideas. God wants you to live at another level. But for you to get to that level, it's going to take, everybody say crazy faith. And then when I think about the story of Jesus being born at Christmas, and I think about what Mary and Joseph had to walk through, for them to get this word from God and then complete this all the way to the end, it was going to take them to having crazy faith. And I said, what better way to end this series than look at the scenario that our Lord and Savior was born into? What better way for us to really get an idea of what the real meaning of this season is about than to see how God so orchestrated the savior of the universe being born into the craziest situation. And the reason why this is exciting for me is because I believe that all your craziness can relate to their craziness. See, if you would be honest with yourself in this place, most of us have been born in crazy families. She was like me, Pastor, they right here, right here. Many of us have had crazy situations in our job. Many of us have had crazy emotional roller coasters that we've been on. Many of us, our life is being crazy and that is good news for every person in this room because even Jesus was not exempt from being born into something that didn't look like it was gonna work out in his good. And I want us to take this journey together. I feel the presence of God already, y'all. I'm too hyped already. I want us to take this journey together and see the progression of every person that is on this crazy faith journey. There's a progression that you're going to have to go through. And if you don't understand it and you don't use wisdom in it, you will not be able to reach the greatest purpose that God has called you to. And the crazy thing about it is most of us think that we have wisdom. But I heard this a long time ago that there's two ways of learning. You can either go through it or you can learn from somebody else who went through it. And a lot of us don't have wisdom because wisdom is applied knowledge. 
A lot of us have knowledge, but we don't apply it, so it just becomes information. And we have more information in our pocket right now than every generation before. That doesn't mean we walk in the same amount of wisdom because we don't do what we know. Oh, I'm coming to you. Everybody in here knows you need to eat right. <laughs> Everybody knows in here that we should work out. Everybody knows certain things, but we have a lot of information, but we don't walk in wisdom. What I'm praying is that this year for Transformation Church and Transformation Nation, that we wouldn't just have information and journals filled of good notes, and we would have our Bible app up, but we would actually apply. Oh, y'all don't want to come and actually make progression this year? That we would apply the information that God has given us and we would walk in, everybody say wisdom. So I want to give you some steps that I found in Mary and Joseph's crazy Christmas story that will allow you to hopefully walk in wisdom. Let's look at this story. Matthew chapter 1 verse 18. It says, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. That don't make no sense. I can just see Mary coming up to Joseph and be like, baby, um, I got something to tell you. <sighs> see, I was just sitting in the bed. Like, what had happened was I was just sitting here, and then this angel had came, and then I don't know why she's so ghetto in my mind, but... <laughs> And then this angel had came, and then he was like, boom, you pregnant, pregnant. And, and then she was like, oh, my God, I do feel kind of bloated. And then, and then I feel like something kicking inside of me, and I don't even know. And Joseph is sitting there like, hold on. You stepped out on me? You said who? You're impregnated by who? The Holy Spirit? H.S.? You cheated on me with Jose Sanchez, didn't you? I knew I shouldn't have let him fix our house. I don't know why. It just comes to me like this. And Joseph is probably thinking at this moment, I can't walk through this situation. Like many of us, I've been faced with situations that when it comes up, we feel like we can't walk through it. Can we be real in this moment right now? We're a humble, open, and transparent church. That means we're a hot church. How many people have faced some things this year that you didn't know how you were going to make it through it, okay? All right, I'm in, a, I'm in a room full of real people. This is where Joseph and Mary were at. Verse 19, Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man. And he didn't want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. I can see Joseph walking down the street like, bro, I, I told her, I told her I was going to be the one. I was going to take her out of this little town and I was going to show her the whole hillside. I told her I just needed to get my, my stuff together and then we was going to get married. I was going to sell this little business and then she was going to have Joe Jr. But now she done messed all that up. Mary, you done messed it all up. You know how when you're really mad and emotional, you talk to the person, but they're not even there. Mary, you done messed it up. And Joseph is sitting at this place, fighting with his emotions and his reality. Just like many of you are at a place where you're making decisions right now, fighting with your feelings and your reality. Uh-huh. I really want to spend more time with my family, but if I take this promotion... I'll be gone all the time so they'll have things but not me. You're fighting with the reality and your emotions. And, and, and what ends up happening for Joseph is he's saying, this is crazy. I can't deal with this, so I'm just going to slide a text message to her and I'm going to tell her it's over. Don't ever call me again. You're blocked. Like that ever works. And look what happens. Joseph gets so overwhelmed emotionally and probably frustrated that he does what everybody does when they get emotionally overwhelmed. What they do? Take a nap. Come on, y'all know when you get too overworked, how many people, if you get too worked up, it's just, it's time to go to sleep. It's time to go to sleep. I just, I'm done. <sighs> and when he goes to sleep thinking that he was escaping the situation, look what happened. As he considered this, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said. 
Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you have a responsibility to name him Jesus. Hold on one second, Jesus. Well, not Jesus yet, because he's about to be born. So hold on one second, angel. You're telling me that I'm in a jacked up situation, but you're going to still give me responsibility in the midst of my crazy situation? You mean that I still got to forgive even though they did me wrong? You mean they let me go from the job and you don't want me to poke his tires? <laughs> Come on, let's be real. I, I want to give you responsibility, even though this situation seems, everybody say crazy. You got to name it. And he said, name him Jesus because he's going to save his people from their sins. Verse 22, and all of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he said, oh, shoot, what happened? Oh, I don't even know what. Oh, my God. The angel said this to me and he took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph did what God asked him to do, even though he was in a crazy situation, even though he's on his second marriage, even though your kids don't listen to you. Are you going to do what God asked you to do? And Joseph named him Jesus. Now, when I think about this, this is the most bizarre situation in the world. And why would God use this crazy situation to make a rescue mission for all of humanity? It's because God likes to use the foolish things that don't make any sense to confound people who think they got it all figured out. That's the same reason why God's going to take you with your brokenness and raise you to a place of leadership. That's why God will take you. Y'all don't hear me in this place. That's why God will take you and all of your baggage and he will collect it and take your mess and turn it into a message. God specializes. And taking things that other people discount and crazy situation and turning it around. But what you have to do is follow the plan when you're on this crazy faith journey. And the first thing that everybody will get when they're following God on this crazy faith journey is they're going to get a crazy word. And God's going to give you a crazy word that doesn't make sense to anybody else. And the problem with getting a crazy word is we want everybody around us to agree with what God has said about us. And this is where many of us get paralyzed in pleasing people. Because God will say, I want you to go back to college. Well, God, my kids is in college right now. Why would I go back to school? Because I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you but it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense what you're asking me to do but God says it doesn't have to make sense it's gonna make a miracle but most of us will not hold on to the crazy word see the thing about the word of God is when he speaks it it doesn't have an expiration date and when God speaks his word, it's not based on how much you mess up. It's not based on how good you do. It's always waiting right above you to come to pass if you were to ever align with what God has for your life. And this is good news for some people in this room who came in here hopeless and thinking that you missed out. That if I was 20 again, or if I was in high school again, or if I would have done this, God says, baby, do you know I stand outside of time? looking for somebody with faith to believe me and to stand with me. And Mary and Joseph got this crazy word. And when you get a crazy word, a crazy word is given to you usually in the darkest situation. Hit me, my man. See, the problem is that when we get a crazy word, the Bible tells us in Psalms 119, 105, that your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. So when you get a word from God, you're supposed to hold on to it. And what it does is not shine for everybody else. It shines right where you are. Oh, y'all better hear me. 
so that God will give you just enough word to make the next step. And after you obey that step, he'll say, keep on serving, keep on forgiving, keep on loving. You ain't got to worry about lighting all of this up. But if you can just make your next step, my word will be the lamp unto your feet and the light unto my path. Somebody say a crazy word. Hit the lights, my man. So after you get a crazy word, something else settles in for all human beings. And I'm sorry, we cannot take it away. Crazy worry. Because after we get a crazy word, like when God told me, hey, Mike, I want you to go to your daughter's room and I want you to write down that the Spirit Bank Event Center will be Transformation Church. That's a crazy word. And after I wrote it down, when we had 300 people in our church at the time and no budget, I know what it is to be a church planner, Jamal. I know what it is to try to get people to believe in you. I know what it is. And then God gives you a crazy word in the midst of opposite circumstances. See, some of y'all are waiting for your circumstance to line up with your word, but it never will. Because that wouldn't take faith for you to walk into it. But God's calling you to call those things that are not as though they already are. And after you get a crazy word, the enemy tries to attack you with crazy worry. How is this going to happen? After I wrote down that, that, that piece of paper, my first question was, God, how in the world are you about to take a little crazy black dude that was born in South Tulsa, move him to North Tulsa, take a church over from a white man, be myself, beg white people to come to the church. How You told me this would be multi-ethnic, multi-generational, multiplying, and multi-campus. You said it would touch the whole world. You said that we were gonna make an impact and make your name great. How? And the problem is with many of us is that we get stuck in the how and we forget about the who. You forget about who told you. You forget about who called you. You forget about who saved you. And God tells us that there's something we need to do. And I found the remedy because after you get the crazy word and you start to be filled with anxiety and worry, God gives us a loose solution in his word. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, he literally starts it off answering our question. Don't worry. God is so gangster that he don't even go around the bush talking about a whole bunch of other stuff. He said, you're worried? Don't worry. Now, now I think about this because I had this experience that, that made me think about this scripture. I went out to eat with this multimillionaire, and he took me to this, like, bougie, bougie restaurant. You know, it's so bougie that they don't even put prices on the menu. See, some of y'all ain't never been to a restaurant like this, like where it just has a word on it, and then they just expect, like, if you can't pay for it, <laughs> you shouldn't be here. Like, because most of us are used to eating at Cheddar's, and $32.99 can feed everybody. Do you hear what I'm saying? We can get spinach dip and a dessert. So I go to this restaurant with this man, and he says, order whatever you want. And it's crazy that when, when somebody tells you, to step out, to do something you've never done before, fear and worries try to still grip you. I'm sitting there at this big old restaurant, and, and he's like, why is it taking you so long to order? It's like, um, I just really can't decide between the filet mignon. <laughs> See, when you ain't been nowhere, you don't even know how to say the names on it. Like, can I get the filet mignon? <laughs> or the duck. And do you know what this man looked at me and said? He said, get them both. I said, hold on, no, 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 I don't. What if I don't like it? What if I don't eat it? And, and he was so unbothered because he was not concerned about the price because he had it. And the only reason we worry about something is because we don't have what it takes to fulfill what it's called for us. But when you got it, oh, y'all don't hear me. You don't worry. 
The same way that this man was about the filet mignon and the duck is the same way that God is about your purpose and your destiny. You're worried, oh y'all don't hear me? You're worried about how it's gonna happen and God says, don't worry. You're worried about how your marriage is gonna come together and God says, don't worry. Cause he got it. He owns everything. The whole universe is standing at attention from one word he spoke one time. And he knows the number of hairs on your head and you think that he is not concerned about the details of your life? Don't worry. But instead you have to do something else. Look what it says. Don't worry about anything, but instead, everybody say instead. Pray about everything. And some of y'all think your prayers have to be so eloquent and that they have to be about only really, really important things. The Bible says, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he's already done. And he says, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. I love this because even if you don't get the thing that you're praying for, you still get peace. God is so good that when he says, don't worry, ah, I love his word. When he says, don't worry, pray about it. He said, you may not get the car or the house, but I'll give you peace that passes all your understanding. And you can't pay for that, baby. Will somebody give God praise for the peace? that passes all understanding. He said, that type of peace will guard your heart and your mind. Okay, all right. So I got a crazy word. I don't know how this is going to happen because that's where the crazy worry came from. But I'm going to pray about it. So now I'm going to have peace. And now I have to decide. Everybody say decide. You got to decide to take this crazy walk. See, a lot of people get over there. They're worried but then they don't actually walk it out. If we would be honest and it was just me and you in a room and I wrote, and you, you allowed me to look at the things that you wrote down that God said five years ago, 10 years ago, some of them would be the same things you still haven't done today. Come on, let's be honest. Because if you're gonna take a crazy faith journey, you just don't get a crazy word and you don't just get over crazy worry. You have to take the crazy walk. And most people want to walk seeing everything clear. But I know this from my time in the Word, that God either shows you the path and not the mountaintop, or He shows you the mountaintop and not the path. And the reason He does that is so you can trust Him. See, a lot of people think when God brings them to this place that maybe they're supposed to figure it out. But the Bible says the steps of a good man are Lord, he wants to tell you what to do. He wants to tell you to move to that city. He wants to tell you to pay for that person's gas. He wants to tell you, but that means that we can't be in control of our walk. We have to let somebody that's greater and knows to be able to speak to us, and we have to listen. And that's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it says, we walk by faith and not by So if you can see it, you don't need faith. But if you can't see it, faith is a requirement. And I came to tell somebody that this is the year I feel by the Spirit of God that you're going to start walking out things that you've been afraid to do for the past years of your life. This is the year where you're actually going to start walking. I don't know who I'm talking to in this building today, but there's something that you have to do that will not happen with you standing still. Mary and Joseph got the crazy word that they were going to have a baby conceived by the Holy Spirit. And the crazy worry came up, but they said, no, baby, we gonna, it's me and you, Bonnie and Clyde, for the rest of our lives. We're going to make this thing together. Let's go. And then they had to decide to walk it out. And it must have been crazy for them to walk out something in front of everybody that everybody else didn't understand. The hardest thing... For many of you in this room, is to obey the word of God that he said, but not have the approval of the people you love. I'm coming for you. Because you would rather please your mom than please God. Yes, sir, I'm coming for it. That hit him right there. You would rather please your boss than please God. You, 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 would, ra you would rather get the approval and the clap of somebody who you've never met but like something on Instagram or Facebook. 
I've seen people shout over a celebrity just looking at something that they put on their social media feed. They don't know you. They don't care about you. They, it just could have been up and they could have accidentally didn't even see it. But we would rather jump at the approval of men than live for the purpose of God. And what has to happen for us is that we have to be ones that say we won't just get a crazy word. But we won't be stuck in crazy worry, but we will take this crazy walk. And if you get the courage to take the crazy walk, I got to let you know about this next one that may mess some people up. You're going to have to, no matter how much money you make and no matter who you know, you're going to have to take the crazy weight. Now, this is the one that loses a lot of people because you want to, to, to come into the presence of God. Like, I came to church for Christmas, Lord, and I got a crazy word. And, Lord, I got kind of wordy there for a second, but I got the peace that passes all understanding. And now that I got that peace, I'm going to walk this thing out. Now, I need you to do wonders. Hold on. I got to wait? You mean... For my marriage to be healed, I might have to go to counseling? You mean for me to be the CEO of that, I got to learn a new trade? You mean I got to read more? Some of y'all forgot reading in high school. Like after high school, it's like, I ain't reading no more again. I promise I ain't ain't reading. No more reading. But the thing about the weight is that is the process in which God develops the things that cannot be developed on a stage. It's the place where God develops your character and he refines your heart and he gives you wisdom beyond your understanding. And what Mary and Joseph had to come to the real reality of is that after they got the word, after they got over their worry, after they decided to take the walk, it was nine months before Jesus would come. What happens if you're pregnant with the purpose, but you still got to wait for it to come to pass? What do you do in the wait? And I came to encourage somebody that was about to give up. You told God that if you don't show up and talk to me in this situation, it's over. Here I am. I'm big, black, and sweaty. And I'm here to tell you, don't give up. I don't know who this is for, but you're about to give up on your marriage. You're about to give up on the business. You're about to give up on your dreams. And I want you to know that it's just a part of the process that you're going to have to go through the crazy wait. When God gave me the word about this building and I got over my worry and I decided to walk and I told my whole team, like, y'all, don't show me no more Kmarts. I don't want no more poles in the auditorium. (laughs) Some of y'all was at 1519. If you got the wrong seat, it was just pole worship the whole time. Just (laughs) What a beautiful pole this is. What a beautiful, like, for real. Okay. And I decided I was going to take that crazy walk, but then we had to go through a crazy wait. They told us it wasn't available for eight months. When God gives you a word and then everybody else says, nope, who do you believe? What do you stand on, the word of God or the reality of your situation? I feel the presence of God because somebody's about to get their faith back. They told us no for eight months. And we had to wait. But what you don't know is during that eight months, we were saving. And I couldn't see it at the time. I couldn't fathom it. I thought the enemy was trying to attack my purpose. But what was a setback in my mind was a setup for when he opened. Oh, y'all don't hear me. What was a setback turned into a setup when it was time for it to open because you need to wait. And this is my encouragement to everybody in this room. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. So let us not get tired of doing what is good. Because at just the, everybody say right time. Yeah, there's a right time coming. I believe it for you. I believe it for your business. I believe it for your family. There is a right time coming. You will reap a harvest of blessing if, everybody say if. And this is the one that jacks people up. If we don't give up. Don't give up. Don't stop praying for those kids that are wilding out right now. You had to unfollow them from social media because you know that's not the baby you raised. 
Oh, I'm talking about real stuff. Don't give up. Even though the doctor told you there's no cure, you only have this much time to live. We saw last week that a woman who had dealt with lupus for 12 years, the doctors got it wrong for 12 years. It reminds me of a woman in the Bible who had an issue of blood for 12 years. And God healed that too. Don't tell me what my God can't do. If we don't give up. And I don't know what stage of this process you're in of your crazy faith journey, but your crazy word, if you would hold on to it, he would give you peace to overcome your crazy worry. And if you could get past that and decide to take that crazy walk and you can outlast the crazy weight, then God does my favorite part. He makes a crazy way. My God specializes in parting Red Seas. He specializes in walls being around something and people shouting in praise and smashing buckets and the walls come down. My God loves making ways where there seems to be no way. That's why as believers, we cannot get bothered when doors are shut. That's God's specialty. When they tell you no, when they, when they say there's no way, that's when God stands up off of heaven and is like, hold on, hold on, what they say? 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 He comes up and he's excited because he said, now my power can be seen because there's nothing man can do. With man, it is impossible. But with me on your side, I remember my Bible saying, if God be for us, who can be, and somebody needs to be encouraged that God is right at the point because you've been faithful. You've been continuing to serve. You've been continuing to give. You've been continuing to speak life when all it looks like is death. And God is saying, I'm about to make a crazy way. This is what he did for Mary and Joseph. See, because when they took their crazy walk, they wasn't just walking up the street in the middle of this time where they're just trying to hold on to this promise. The government says that everybody has to go back to their hometown for a census. And so in the midst of the hardest season of carrying a vision, Mary has to go to a long journey to another place and they have to walk there. And isn't it crazy how God asks you? To do difficult things when you already feel like you're behind? How can I forgive them when I haven't even forgiven myself? I'm coming for it. You want me to give them money? Lord, you saw the account. And then it's in negative, negative, negative. I'm so overdrafted in this account, Lord. But you would, you would ask me to do something that doesn't make sense in the midst. He said, what you're doing is you're sowing seeds into what I'm about to do. That act of kindness, that act of love. Some of y'all just coming to church today. I'm sowing seeds and what I'm about to do. And Mary and Joseph get to the place where they were obeying God in Bethlehem. And there's no room for them. Now, what happens when you obey God and you you thought he was going to make a way, but now you just feel like you're in the way. Nobody has room for your gifting. Nobody has room for, for your talents. Nobody has room for what God's placed inside of you. Nobody's talking about the thing that God, everybody else is getting elevated, but I'm still sitting here. And Mary and Joseph literally were obeying God and got the door slammed on them. What happens? See, on this Christmas, I could come and make you hype, but I want you helped. I don't want you hype, I want you healed. And some of you are about to give up in this process because you didn't want to go through this journey. But I'm telling you, if you would stay faithful on this crazy faith journey and you would get past the weight, God is going to make a way just like he made a way for Mary and Joseph. He made a way in an obscure place. Ooh, that's why I love the dark room. See, some of y'all don't know anything about this, but about 10 years ago when you wanted to get a picture developed, you took it, 
pow, and then you hit this little button on the back that was like wind the film, like rank, 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 and then the red light would come on. Look at people just confused right now. If you remember disposable cameras, lift your hands in the room, okay. Everybody else is like, how many pixels is that? We don't even know. <laughs> it wasn't a pixel type of situation. And what had to happen is you would take it to a place like Walgreens or your drugstore, and you would have to wait on it. And you would put it in this little thing, and a professional would take it to the dark room. And the reason why they would take it to the dark room is because there were things that needed to be developed in obscurity before it ever, y'all better help me preach to this place, before it ever saw the light. Because if it was exposed to light too early, then it was overexposed and the picture was ruined. And some of y'all have been believing to get in places that it's too early for you to get exposed to that level of power. It's too early for you to get exposed to that level of fame. It's too early because God says, what I want for you is this picture to last. And so what, what did God do for Mary and Joseph? He put them in an obscure place, a dark place, on the backside of a barn. Oh, I'm preaching right now. And he didn't have the thing and fair. And why did he do that? I think God is so strategic and he knew me and you would be sitting here. And if Jesus was born in the Ritz Carlton of Bethlehem, most of us wouldn't be able to relate. But he was born in the nastiest situation full of... Um... <laughs> there was crap all around. And doesn't look, that look like most of our situations? And he said, out of the crap, I'm going to allow something to be born that will touch the entire world. Out of the crap that has happened in your life, I prophetically speak this over you, that out of the crap that's happened with your business, out of the crap that's been happening in your marriage, out of the crap that has happened, God is going to take what has happened to you. I feel this thing. Somebody's pulling on me. That the crap that has happened to you is going to turn that mess into a message and more people are going to be saved, healed, delivered, find hope and find freedom because of what God's going to do in obscure place. If you believe it in this room, would you give God a shout of praise in this place I feel that thing he's gonna take this thing and turn it around and I love this about Jesus because everybody paints Jesus as this soft very lowly character but don't get it twisted my Jesus is a gangster look what it says in John 14 6 because a lot of y'all think that a way is going to be made by karma and the universe and Buddha's going to make a way. But Jesus clears all of that up before we even came up with all these, um, these ideas of our head. Look what it says in John chapter 14, 6. It said, Jesus told them, this is him talking. This is Gangther. He said, everything that y'all been looking for, I'm the way. What you thought was going to help you? Ah, I'm the way. <laughs> oh, you thought it was going to be success? No, baby, that can't fill you up. I'm the way. Oh, you thought it was sleeping with a whole bunch of people? That's going to get old. You're going to get tired. I'm the way. Oh, y'all want to be fake. He said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. Take a breath. And I'm the life. <laughs> I'm that too. And then he says, no one can come to daddy except they come through the way. The reason that I'm preaching this hard and this passionately, because some of y'all decided before you came here, this was the only time you were coming to church. You're sick of what church people do and all this other stuff. I'm glad you gave us an opportunity to represent to you. Can we give it up for every person that's a visitor and that came here? I love you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. But I'd be a bad leader. If I didn't tell you that I tried everything, I tried, I tried lying, I tried money, I tried sex, I tried pornography, I tried all of those things and nothing could fill me up. It wasn't until I found the way that God then made a way. Y'all, I should not be standing on this platform today. There is no way you can look me up right now on Oklahoma something and I got a mug shot sitting right there like what it do? <laughs> because I, 
But the crazy thing, and why I can share that unashamedly, because I'm not who I was. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I found the way, the truth, and the life. And because I found him, he looked beyond my faults, and he saw my need. And he put me in the right place and he shared his love with me and his grace came over me. And that's the same thing that I want to offer to you. What better gift could you give yourself than getting on the path of the way? See, when God made a way for Mary and Joseph, he didn't just make a way for them. He made a way for three wise men that he gave a crazy word to. He said, hey, there's a Messiah being born. He's going to save the whole world. Y'all take y'all y'all best, and go take it to them. And they was like, huh, how, when, where, why? And they probably had crazy worry and they got over their crazy worry and they started taking a literal crazy walk and literally following a star to try to find Jesus. And they had to wait. And in their wait, they came in contact with the king who was trying to turn them all around and use and manipulate them. But then God made a crazy way and the star appeared again. And behind the rich Carlton of Bethlehem, they found Jesus in an obscure manger. And guess what they did when they came in contact with the way? The only thing you can do in response to God making a crazy way is give him crazy worship. The reason that we acted a fool before I started preaching today is because God is making crazy ways where everybody else said there would be no way. And my only response is to lift my hands and lift my voice and give my finances and do the things that everybody else thinks is crazy. But he's the only one that allowed me to be in this space, in this place right now. It's the same thing with this building. When they called me and told me that the Spirit Bank Event Center was available, and they literally said the deal fell through 10 minutes ago. Do y'all still want this building? I got in a car so fast, and me and a few people from our executive team sped over here from the north side because in the moment that we were about to give up, God made a way. And when they made a way, I told them, I said, give them the money today. Give it, you can't, okay, you can't give them it today. Give it to them tomorrow. And the next day we put the earnest money down on this building. The crazy thing about it is it was a crazy word that God told me that I didn't know how it was going to happen, but I decided to take a crazy walk and I had to wait eight months. But then God made a crazy way. And at the moment he made a crazy way, we were able to put $6 million down on a building that cost 10.5, but they built for $54 million dollars just nine years ago and God said oh they would not think I could do this but I found somebody that would go through the crazy faith journey when he made that way many of you saw the video I came and told my church we got the keys 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 and we acted a fool for a solid month <laughs> like no joke because when God makes a crazy way, it deserves crazy worship. And that's what the wise men did. They took their crowns off. These men had money. These men had status. That's why I don't care how many zeros you have in your bank. Oh, this would look bad for my colleagues. Who cares? This would look bad to my IG followers. They can't save you. If we would stop living for the approval of people who don't even care, it would be the most liberating thing for you. Because these wise men, with all of their accolades, the Bible says in Matthew 2, verse 10, it said, when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house, they saw the child and his mother, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened up their treasures and they gave. See, the reason why... Last week, Transformation Church gave over a million dollars away. Was not just so those people could be blessed. It was so that God could be worshipped. Yeah. No, you missed it. You wouldn't imagine how many people have called and texted and sent mail saying how Transformation Church, us, not Pastor Mike, us, being a generous church, changed the trajectory of their faith. 
See, when God does something, now hear me, when God does something that big and we worship in that way, it's for one reason. The reason why God gives you a crazy word and you have to get over the crazy worry and you have to decide to take the crazy walk and you have to endure the crazy wake and then God makes a crazy way and then you give him crazy worship is so that the crazy world will know that he's real. And I just wonder how many people don't know that God's amazing because you've lost sight of the crazy word that he told you. And some of you, this is the first time you've ever been in a service like this and something's stirring on the inside of you and you're feeling something. That's God trying to give you a crazy word. But I need you to understand that the people that you hate, God loves. So when God wants you to be blessed, it's so that you can be a blessing and you may have to bless somebody you don't like. See, when he gives you a crazy word, it's for the crazy world. And everything that I do is not just for the church, it's for those who are far from God. Those who feel like everybody's given up on them. And I wish that, that we could just be a church. I speak in faith that we will be a church that always will be a hospital for humanity. We will be a church for people who are broken and lost in the world. We have lost our religion. And we are in relationship with the only God that saw us when we were messed up. And he cared enough about us to bring us into this thing. Everybody thinks that you need to be healed before you come into this place. But this is the hospital for humanity. And a lot of people are like, oh no, I just gotta get some stuff right with God first and then I'll come to church. But what physical hospital do you ever go to after getting a gunshot wound and saying, no, I don't need to go to the emergency room. I'm gonna try to wrap myself up and then I'm gonna come to the hospital. This is the church. And this church and our whole lives and Jesus being born and Mary and Joseph getting that crazy word was for the crazy world. And today, if you're in this room, I want you to know that everything I've been through, everything that, that this church has gone through, was to reach somebody that is far. And the word we have so that you can find the loving Savior at this Christmas season that came to save your entire life. And Pastor Mike, why are you so passionate about this? Because I don't know if tomorrow is promised to any of us. Like you're planning for Christmas, but I don't know if I'll make it there. What I do know is that when we shouted for houses and cars last week, those things the Bible tells us will rust and fade away. But when somebody gives their life to Christ, just one person, that's something that will last for eternity. And so today, the reason why I just want you to feel these words that I'm saying is because everything I went through, the crazy word God gave me, the reason we're standing in this building, the reason that God is taking us to another level is not for us. It's for the crazy world. And once you start to impact the crazy world, guess, guess what ends up happening? You really understand what the Bible says in John 3.16. For this is how God loved the world, that he gave his only son so that whosoever or everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. But read verse 17. God sent his son into the world not to judge it. But he sent God into this crazy world to save it. That reminds me, I forgot to tell you the title of my message today. Part 20 of Crazy Faith is called Saving Faith. Because it's the only thing that God wants for everybody. The only reason we need to have crazy faith is because he wants to change your life with saving faith. What good is believing for all of these things if it all stays here on earth? What good is it to have cars and houses and toys to give your kids and you give them no spiritual legacy when they go through a situation they turn to a bottle instead of Jehovah Jireh what happens when you live your whole life and they haven't experienced saving faith I feel this thing on the inside of me today God wants you whoever you are with all of your brokenness 
watching online, watching on rebroadcast. He wants you to know that he has a plan for you. And the crazy faith is all to lead to saving faith. And once you find out that this is how God wants you to live, it's supposed to create a crazy wave. See, the thing about a wave, if you've ever been to the beach, is that they keep coming. <laughs> and when you think that it's over, they keep coming. And when you think that the love of God is over, it keeps coming. And when you think that the grace of God is over, it keeps coming. And if we would ever be a church that would really go out and live this thing in front of people, because they may never ever see Pastor Mike, but you may be the only Bible that they'll ever read. The book of Sharice, the book of John, the book of Jose. The book of Daquan, the book of Jack, the book of Cheryl. And with the way that you live life, let somebody be overtaken with the wave of the love of God. And I just made a decision for Transformation Church and for everybody in this room. Yeah, many of us have gotten a crazy word. And if not, during this 21 days of prayer and fasting we're about to go on in January, I promise you, if you've never done a fast before, I am double dog daring you. And you know when somebody double dog dare you, you got to do it. But I double dog dare you to take this moment and push your plate away for 21 days and go on this thing so you can hear God. And I promise you, he'll give you a crazy word. And when he gives you a crazy word, you're going to have to get over the crazy worry. And when you get over the crazy worry, then you're going to have to decide to take the crazy walk. And when you take the crazy walk, you're going to have to endure the crazy weight. But after you endure the crazy weight, God is going to make a crazy way. And after he makes a crazy way, I feel the presence of God. The only response is to give him crazy worship. And when you give him crazy worship, you'll understand that everything he did in your life was for the crazy world. So that you can take what he's done in you and create a crazy wave. So that the whole world would know that Jesus is the only one who saves. Do y'all know at Christmas time that the only reason we give gifts is to mimic the gift that God gave to us through Jesus? But where do we put our gifts? Under a what? We put them under a tree. And it's amazing that in this stable, Jesus would be born, but 33 years later that he would die on a tree the greatest gift would be put to death on a tree so that we could understand the real reason for the season if you're in this room today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior it's all coming down to this all the lights all the smoke all the music all the other stuff me dressing up me sweating it doesn't matter about any of this if you don't experience saving faith all over this building, in the room and online, would you close your eyes and bow your head and really think about where you are in your relationship with God? Is God far away from you and the big man upstairs that has no detail in your life? Or is he close to you and he's guiding you and leading you? If you don't know where you are today, I want to offer you saving faith. I feel the presence of God in this place. It's the thing that took me from being a liar, a manipulator, addicted to pornography, somebody who was a bad person and dark on the inside. It took me from being like that, not to a perfect man, but a progressing man. And today that gift is available to you. I don't care who you slept with last night. I don't care what bad business deal you made. I don't care what you're planning to do after this. And I don't care what substance is in your system right now. Today is the day of salvation. God has made a crazy way to sending Jesus for you to have eternal life. But now I got this crazy word, but I'm crazy worried because I don't know how this is going to happen. I got good news for you. According to Romans 10 and 9, if you would believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. And today on the count of three, if you're saying, Pastor, I want you to include me in the prayer y'all are about to pray. Because I'm tired of living my life for myself and I want to find the way. What better gift to give your family and yourself at the end of a decade than to give your full life over to God. And some people in this room, you used to walk close with God, but now you've been far away doing your own thing. 
on the count of three, if you're going to rededicate your life, I want you to raise your hand too. Everybody online, everybody in this room. One, you're making the greatest decision of your life. Two, God is proud of you and so are we. I see hands going up right now. Three, come on, lift your hands all over this building. And can we get, I see you, sister. I see you, my brother. I see you. I see you. I see you. And more than that, God sees you. Come on, Transformation Church. Let's give God some praise. We see you online. Now listen. Transformation Church is a family. Nobody prays alone. There were dozens of hands that goes up. And that gets me pumped up because this was not to make sure that everybody that wanted to do a religious duty and be entertained had a great time tonight. This was for saving faith. And I want everybody to pray this prayer with me. Come on, everybody say, God, thank you for sending Jesus just for me. I believe you lived and you died for me. Thank you for saving faith. Change my life. Renew me. Transform me. I'm yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give God praise with the dozens? Oh, y'all can do better than that. Can we give God praise for saving faith? Everybody online, this is a new season and a new day for you. Thank you so much for watching Transformation Church's YouTube. And I just want you to take another step. If this is feeding you, join Transformation Nation. That's everybody that doesn't live here in Tulsa watching live with us on Sunday mornings. Gather your family. Let's make this thing an every week situation. And please share, share if it has impacted your life. There is somebody that is waiting for you to share this with them. And transformation is only a click away. And there's one more thing I would ask you to do. Pray about giving. If you wanna help us take this message all around the world and represent God to lost and found people for one reason, transformation in Christ, you can do that right now by clicking the give button. I cannot wait to see you the next time we're here. Live a transformed life.